Good evening. This is Maestro Cotella with another Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today we have a 2v2 on Golgotha Depths. One second. And we have some great players here. Our first player right here is Adilla. Pretty solid player. Typically think of him more as an Eldar player, but here he's playing as the Space Marine Apothecary, who's kind of hiding in the shadows right now, where you can see the gleam in that... Uh, the green gleam of his eyes, or whatever. But anyway, Space Marine Apothecary is a healing hero. The, he heals tactical marines and assault space marines. Pretty good hero, not a great fighter. His teammate is Dark Riku as this uh, plague champion. This plague champion of Nurgle starts off as a ranged hero. Doesn't actually look too much different from these Chaos Space Marines. And he can become a melee hero. Uh, starts off in range. Some people think it's better to keep him that way. Next up is Commissar Lag. <laughs> Leading his brigade. The Pink Cadian Regiment. <laughs> that uh, some people are not very fond of. But I actually really like seeing these all pink colors. And I'm glad that Relic allowed us to do that. But anyway, the Commissar is a sort of tanky melee, melee hero. He is a su pseudo melee tank and support hero. He can execute his troops to make them fight harder, and by fight harder, that literally means uh, make them do twice as much damage with their guns. He did get forced off right here. He can be a pretty beastly guy, uh, but not quite as tanky as some of the real tanky melee heroes. Finally, we have Noisy Elmo as this uh, Lictor Alpha. Lurking, stalking, invisible. Understood. Tank, uh, not tanky, but, well, actually he can be pretty tanky, but he's a melee hero, very, very powerful. Definitely a very good hero. All right, so we see that Commissar Lag has gone for triple guardsman, which is somewhat uncommon. Maybe not too much. Uh, I've definitely seen someone like Toy La Lee go for triple guardsman and a sentinel, but right now Commissar Lag does not have a sentinel. I wonder if he'll get one. And he kind of warned Noisy that he was going to go for this build, and Noisy pretended to be angry about it. At it about it. Um, I don't know exactly what the benefits are of going for that build. Ooh, some uh, termagants explode, I think. Uh, it's certainly going to be many sources of ranged fire, but guardsmen are not really a very powerful ranged squad. They have a lot of utility, uh, and they synergize very well with the rest of the Imperial Guard army. Um, but it doesn't really seem... They're, they're definitely, at least on their own, they're not very, that powerful. Uh, it's usually they usually rely more on synergy with the chimera uh, or with the sentinel and they also rely on plasma gun upgrades if they're playing against the power armor race so commissar lag up upgrading his um commissar quite a bit already power sword which is a great choice against power armor races uh since you just it gives you a lot more damage. Something like it's it's roughly actually uh, double the damage against power armor units like Havocs uh, or Chaos Space Marines, as well as giving him an ability that increases his speed and allows him to do knockback on command, or basically just makes every attack uh, a knockback. Additionally, uh, Commissar Leg is getting the Carapace armor, basically just reduces the cooldown on his execute ability. Oh, and it also grants him a damage bonus and suppression immunity to the Commissar. Oh, so that's what was happening there. He was using that so he could just walk past the heavy bolter uh, of that of that Havoc uh, with the suppression immunity that he apparently now has. Uh, also means he can execute a lot, and that might be why he also got three Guardsmen instead of just two. So Commissar Lord with fully kit out in Tier 1. We have Assault Space Marines as well as Raptors. Raptors, I'm surprised that we had a full retreat there. I guess the combination of the Assault Marines and the Raptors. Full retreat is actually pretty mysterious. Um, I'm, it sounds like Noisy did that intentionally. Uh, I don't think he should have. I think with all the melee units he had there, he actually could have killed several Raptor models and possibly even wiped the squad. So very surprised to see that. As it is, Raptors still in trouble going in against all these Guardsmen. Needs to be very careful. 
And that's really bad for the guards when heretics get in there. Oh, but there's that knockback from the uh, the Commissar Lord doing a ton of damage to those squishy heretic models. Heretics now in a lot of trouble. All right, looks like they all get out of there alive. But it's now a triple cap uh, for the blue team. So Adila with, he's got a scout, fully upgraded scouts that allows him to use the shotguns to counter all this melee, but the scouts get flesh took and now they're really out of position. And this is actually really bad for the Assault Space Marines, but we see some Purification Vials, unfortunately hitting absolutely nothing aside from maybe the Assault Space Marines. Uh, purification Vials are a grenade ability that the Apothecary gets, and they can be pretty good, especially against these high model, low HP units. And why are all these Tyranids dying? They are also reinforcing. I don't even know how they're reinforcing. Oh, they're reinforcing because we have the Pheromone War Gear from the Lictor Alpha. Uh, allows allows Tyranid units to reinforce out on the field. Also has the Adrenal Glands. Apparently just now uh, statistical, just stat boosts. Health, health regeneration, energy, and energy regeneration. And the Commissar Lord is apparently getting suppressed anyway. Oh. Maybe only when he uses Inspire Courage. And the Lictor Alpha here is detected, very out of position. Needs to be really careful. I think you will get the Lictor Alpha out of there, but that was kind of just a missed micro by noise. He probably has it, had his attention somewhere else where the rest of his units were. So Adila with a fairly light build, only has the Scouts, Tax, and the Assault Space Marines. Uh, no second Scout, no Devastator, and he can go to Tier 2. Dark Riku, he's got a Chaos build with only one Heretic. These days you really see multiple Heretic squads. You might see one Heretic from people who don't play Chaos as much. Uh, usually Chaos players these days go for multiple Heretics. Usually, usually two when I say multiple. Um, three is, I've seen three and occasionally even four, but those are actually kind of uncommon. Um, but you do get a lot of, uh, Dark Riku's build does have a lot of variety. He does have Chaos Space Marines just providing uh, basic range support. Suppression from the Havocs, but they're in a building so I can't select them. And then of course we have this melee and anti-setup and anti-ranged support from, this, uh, from these Chaos Raptors. Now the Chaos Raptors, it's a little risky uh, using them against the... would be a little risky using them against most of Noisy's units. I mean, they will hard counter the Termagants, but he has to be very careful about the Hormagants and the Warriors. Assault Marines jump into their own grenade. I think what Adillo was trying to do there, he wanted to use the knockback from the Assault Marines uh, to combine that with the grenade, but it seemed like he just ended up ultimately tossing a grenade right where his assault space marines landed. So I, I see what he, what I think he tried to do, but unfortunately it didn't quite work out well for him. And now it looks like the red team is doubling Adila. Where is Riku? Riku is over here. He's moving back so that he doesn't get flanked too hard. Doesn't find himself with his units uh, in the retreat. Doesn't find his retreat path filled with Hormacons. Commissar Lag also floating a huge amount of resources. Apparently not bleeding a lot from those from those guardsmen. So one of the things that we see Commissar Lag doing, he got that Inspire that Carapace armor, which allows him to remove the cooldown on Inspire Courage, which means you can use it more often. Now Commissar players as it is are already pretty hesitant about using that ability because it presents a lot of risk. Um, because your units cannot retreat for, I believe it's 10 seconds, which is extremely risky. Uh, so you need to be very smart with that ability, or you can risk losing an entire squad. Uh, so far, Commissar Lag has kept all three of his Garthen squads alive. That's very risky. These guys are at half health. There are Raptors right here. They need to run back. But, I mean, Commissar Lag, an experienced Imperial Guard player, he probably knows what he's doing, uh, and he is getting a Chimera, which indicates to me that he does indeed know what he's doing. Now, one of the ways to mitigate the risk, and wow, look at how often he's using Execute with the Commissar. This is very interesting play. It's definitely not that common. Uh, usually, Commissar players will either get the Flat Jacket or, Bion or the Bionic Eye, uh, so they can use uh, Inspire Terror or Inspire Determination, which are at least those uh, often seem like much, strong, much more powerful abilities. Heretics right here, those... those uh, those Imperial Guardsmen are going to be in a lot of trouble, just barely... Oh, no, one's going to go down, one's going to go down. <gasps> wow, he upgrades to the Commissar just in time and manages to save that that Guardsman squad. I think it was just about to die. And look, Blue Team 
being very oppressive against Commissar Lag. So Commissar Lag with a very guardsman oriented play. Uh, literally, he's got his guardsman, the Commissar, and the Chimera. So the Chimera mitigates a lot of the risk of using Execute because although the units can't retreat, you can put it inside the Chimera. And then once it's inside the Chimera, it will, the guardsman will be safe. Uh, from small arms fire. Even if the Chimera goes down, they will at least be safe for a little while, although losing the Chimera is not a good thing. Alright, now one of the things I'm noticing is that it often seems, at least right now, it looks like Adila and Dark Riku are really fighting together, and consequently they're forcing off uh, Commissar Lag and Noisy. Uh, although at some point, uh, Lag and Noisy were actually doing that over to Adila when we saw them over on this side. Chimera in a lot of trouble right now. Uh, Commissar Lag does have some stormtroopers. He will probably put the anti-armor kit on them uh, so that he can deal with that. Oh, this is this is very going to be very tough to deal with. We do have some Chaos Space Marines. The Corn Chaos Space Marines are actually very good against Imperial Guard, except for the fact that they might get wiped right here. This uh, this Chaos Dreadnought is it's he's letting it get too close. We need that anti-armor kit now, but this could be a dead Chaos Dreadnought, especially considering. The Oh, so looks like Dark Riku backs off with the Chaos Dreadnought. He actually could have chased the Chimera into base. Now, the only thing is that um, with the repair support of Triple Guardsman, he could probably out-repair that auto cannon damage. Uh, and then Dark Riku probably has the experience to know that he saw the Stormtroopers, even if they don't have the anti-armor kit, uh, Commissar Lag is probably going to be upgrading to it because there's a Chaos Dreadnought right in front of his face. So, a massive VP lead for Adila and Dark Riku. Um, 452 to 195. And that Havoc. This Havoc, how long has it been Has it been in this building? It seems like this is a good place for a Havoc, or just a good garrison place, uh, given the position that it has. Ooh, Plague Champion gets Flesh Hook. Now, he's in a corner. That's actually a beautiful Flesh Hook. Uh, but it looks like the play champion will get out of there alive. Now, this Chaos Dreadnought will win against pretty much everything here, but I think Riku needs to be really careful about letting it be isolated. So, both both blue team heroes just died. Uh, Adila used the Laramans Blessing Global to get both of the blue team heroes back. This, uh, this Chimera, I think, unfortunately, is dead. Um, unless... I don't know. It's, I think that's going to be a dead Chimera. It's also going to be a dead Chaos Dreadnought, but the Chimera is going to die as well. Um, the Chimera is being chased down by the Chaos Space Marines and the Raptors. Now, the Corn Chaos Space Marines really do count as a light vehicle counter, and there's unfortunately nothing Lag can do to stop those Chaos Space Marines. So, Corn Chaos Space Marines are actually very good against Imperial Guard. Um, first of all, they're. But they might die right here. That's stuff going on over here. Oh, there's a nice. That looks like a nice um, purification bounce. So, oh, and oh, what a beautiful plasma cannon shot. And the, ca the Commissar, not the Commissar. Oh. So, Adila tried to use Angels of Death, um, but his Apothecary just got flesh tooked into a whole Tyranid blob. That is, of course, just one of the, one of the really powerful things about the, the Lictor Alpha, that he has that flesh hook ability. You can use it to great effect against heroes. You just flesh hook a hero, and then all of a sudden, he's just right in the middle of a huge blob of stuff. The Dreadnought is down. Um, Commissar Lag has these du now double Melta Stormtroopers, which I don't know if is such a great thing. He, he may have overinvested in just trying to get that Dread down. I wonder if maybe he could have taken out with just a one. Um, but I mean, at least the Dread is gone. He does have these Melta Stormtroopers. They can still work, but uh, they would have... I think it would. he would just have a more versatile build if he had one with Meltas, uh, the other one with... Uh, the Assault Kit, since he would have a long-range source of high DPS. Commissar Leg, I, to be honest, I think he should just get Catachans. Uh, the Chaos Space Marines are just extremely good. Uh, they're extremely good against Imperial Guard. Uh, because they actually they actually kind of counter the Sentinel. They do power melee damage, which does very good damage to the armor of the Sentinel. They have Plasma Pistols and Melta Pistols, which would also be good against the Sentinel. So they don't even need to worry about getting disrupted. They can bait out the 
the Sentinel stun. Uh, and then the Corncast Space Marines actually function as light AV. And if the Imperial Guard player does not have a unit like Catachans, it can pretty much just relentlessly chase down a Chimera, which is what we saw. And that's one of the reasons these, these Corncast Space Marines are really good. And then once the Corncast Space Marines destroy um, the, con the, the Sentinel and the Chimera, then they basically just get free reign on the Guardsmen. Um, and then the Corncast Space Marines, they will even pretty much just win against uh, against the uh, against the Commissar. Especially fully upgraded. Noxious Cloud, gonna be used. It looks like, I think, Hormigons from Noisy right here. Those two Hormigons should be dead. We also have Touch of Nurgle as well from Dark Riku. Looks like Riku may have... Oh, Riku lost his Dreadnought. And yes, it looks like this Hormigon Brood actually gets out of there alive, so... Noisy Elmo not losing any units. Dark Riku getting very close to using one of his heretics. And now we have Chaos, the Aspiring Champion. Uh, no, not as Yeah, Aspiring Champion Chaos Raptors. Just doing, just jumping in on those guardsmen. Now, Commissar Leg does have plasma guns on all of his guardsmen. He does have multiple guardsmen. Um, so, whichever guardsman squad does get jumped or suppressed or whatever, uh, the other two can actually help to focus down any melee units. Um, but still, I think Count Leg could really use some Catachans, particularly for these Chaos Space Marines. Um, the Chaos Space, the Coin Chaos Space Marines, I guess they are bleeding um, Riku a bit. They are dying, but they they also just do such awesome work. Uh, Riku could maybe use a he could maybe use like a Noise Marine squad or something. So because this this force right here. This uh, triple guardsman. It's just it's great range DPS. Uh, well, actually, it's not. Well, actually, against against heavy armor, it really is great range DPS. Um, but it's good range DPS. Three different guardsman spots, <gasps> and that's going to be wow. Those melters did huge amount of damage, and that that ha that havoc member really just got killed. Assault marines. Lucky to not lose a model there. And Adila and Riku have a massive VP lead, but they've lost so much now that Commissar Leg and Noisy really stand a chance to bring it back here. We have a grenade. Not such a great grenade. Um, but it also looks like um, Lag used his Melted Stormtroopers to destroy the entire red team power farm, or the entire blue team power farm. Heretic's dead. Oh, no. Oh, the Heretic's looks like they just might have survived there. Looks like the Heretic's were just about to survive there. They actually got some health back from uh, Touch of Nurgle, killing the second-to-last Heretic. But then the Aspiring Champion just couldn't take all that range fire. Uh, Noisy has actually preserved pretty much all of his units. Can't, had some close calls. We saved them all. Land Raider Redeemer coming from Dilla. This is this choice. It could it could work. Um, it would be good against noisy, but I'd be worried about those double melt of stormtroopers. We have three hundred points remaining. Understood. Looks like this power farm will go down. Unfortunately, Riku is really hurting a lot. I'm guessing he's saving up for a Predator? Maybe. It's hard to tell. No, he gets a Havoc. If he were saving up for a Predator, I don't think that would be a good choice with double Melt of Stormtroopers. Uh, he, Riku needs to be really careful about trying any kind of vehicle play whatsoever. And it's, this is just going to be really tough for Adila and Riku to deal with. Having lost so much, uh, they're just really going to be at an army disadvantage. It's going to be tough for them to win fights. Now, I think the Chaos Raptors, will they jump in here? Yes, they do. That allows the Corn Chaos Space Marines to just get in right there. And, yes, we see a full retreat, or a full retreat on the Guardsmen uh, from Commissar Lag. Lag now actually getting a Lehman Rust. Not a bad choice. Now the Chaos Space Marines are the Corn Chaos Space Marines again. Still a light vehicle counter. They can, they actually can um, 
certainly do some damage to the Lehman Rust, but the Lehman Rust might be too, doing too much damage to the Chaos Space Marines in return. Uh, and Riku will need some kind of harder AV to deal with the Lehman Rust. Riku replaces his Havoc and puts it in that same garrison. Not, uh, we have a another Noxious Cloud. Actually not doing... I felt like it wasn't doing that well. So I was surprised to see uh, Noisy just do a full retreat there. I think Noisy actually should have just split his units up. Send them all in different directions. Maybe he would have had to retreat one, but he could have kept most of his units on the field. Land Raider Redeemer out now for Adilla. Tier 3 super unit for the Space Marines. Serves as a mobile base. You can re you can retreat to it. You can reinforce off it. You can, And it also has a healing arm. Pretty good as anti-infantry. Very vulnerable to uh, hard AV, especially tanks. So something like a Lehman Rust would definitely be uh, one of the best counters to a Land Raider Redeemer. Spore Mines, I think, are going to drop right by this Havoc. Uh, these Spore Mines, I've been realizing, are, as much as they're one of the few sources of anti-garrison that Tyranids have, they're also a pretty powerful asset in general, uh, actually coming very close to, to killing these Havocs, and they need to retreat. They're retre the Havocs are retreating to the Land Raider Redeemer, but the Havocs actually... Oh my god, I think the Havocs actually got wiped by the um, ass frag assault from the Land Raider Redeemer, which is very, very unfortunate. And this Land Raider Redeemer, I think, is going to die. Lehman Rust is right here. The Land Raider Redeemer might even take out the Lehman Rust, though. Crazy stuff is going on. I think these these Corn Chaos Space Marines actually need to target the Lehman Rust. Yes. And, oh, no. He doesn't target it. He needs to target the Lehman Rust because he can kill the Lehman Rust. Too late. And those might be dead Corn Chaos Space Marines. Yes. I don't... Wow. Riku just lost everything. And Adila just lost the Land Raider Redeemer. Fist of Brock is now up for the Commissar Lord. Tier 3 Power Fist. For the purpose of actually fighting, that is like the stats of the Power Fist, it's exactly the same as his Tier 2 Power Fist, but it gives him the None Shall Fall ability. Now, Tier 3 War Gears are always very powerful. This allows... It basically makes Guardsmen, or not just Guardsmen, but any units that are in radius of the Commissar invulnerable for a period of time. They won't die. They'll take health damage. Uh, so if you're not careful and the ability wears off, then they'll basically just be right next to death. Uh, so it also works well if you have something that can heal the Guardsmen like this Aura of Discipline. And, um... Oh my god. Oh my god. And Dark Riku is complaining about Lord Commissar shenanigans. And yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of what com what lag did that, <laughs> what the shen shenanigans were. I guess it may have just been all that executing. I really, really interesting play um, from Commissar lag. Very, it's actually play that I really have not seen to be honest. I have not seen Commissar play like this, and he's executing again using that inspire, that inspire courage with a short cooldown. I've been playing the comp- Oh my god! And we have an orbital bombardment. Absolutely devastating against Tyrant units. <laughs> Except lag uses uses the nunshaw fall ability <laughs> to make it so that pretty much nothing died there. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. So, None Shall Fall, making all of those units invulnerable, made it so that pretty much nothing died from that orbital bombardment. <laughs> oh my god. Stormtrooper dies, kind of after the fact. It's okay, because Commissar Lag still has another one. I'm guessing that... I'm guessing that Adila and Dark Riku are not winning this game. It's still going. But I have a habit of calling things too early. Now, Commissar Leg is in Tier 3. He has 999 red. He's he's pretty beastly in this game, I, I have to say. And here's a rocket run. At this point, I think it's just a rocket run for fun. Uh, I think it just might wipe the heretics, and it doesn't even wipe the heretics. And, and I mean, Leg is doing that because he... I think he's just sitting on that red. He already has enough red to do another rocket run. Leg Champion goes down. 
Now, I think most of the interesting things in this replay are probably already done. So, very interesting things. Commissar Lag, using that Inspired, that inspired Courage ability. Now, I've actually... I've been playing the Commissar a bit. I've actually never, never bought the Carapace armor. I would always go for Bionic Eye uh, or the Flak Jacket. Uh, and both of those abilities are extremely good as well. And some people have been saying some things about maybe the Commissar. I, there was certainly a time when I heard people saying, like, oh, the Commissar is probably one of the, the weaker IG hero. And I'm, I'm definitely no longer thinking that, both after some of my own experiences as well as watching some of these replays. Uh, Inspire Terror is basically allows you to use Execute on enemy units, and that has some really great potential for um, for wiping units, uh, especially units like Zoanthropes. Uh, Inspire Determination that you get from the Bionic Eye is has been it's been known for a very long time just how ridiculous that ability is in combination with things like Catachans uh, as well as Ogrins. And come on, Leg, go for the cap. Alright, he's capping with his uh, stormtroopers. He's gonna like try to wipe this this heretic squad on a tree just with a ranged fire, I think. I love that. We we just heard the space marine talk. You will find me a sour meal, alien. Which is kinda ridiculous, but one of the things I love about this game. Apothecary has purification rights. Let's look at the heroes. And what else are we going to look at? We have the Apothecary with the Anointed Power Axe. It's the most powerful weapon you can get for the Apothecary. Uh, also allows him to burn and restore 15, 15 energy with each strike. Armor of Purity, giving him a cooldown reduction on his heal. And then purification rights. Fantastic war gear. Um, basically just does weapon knockback to whatever is surrounding any of the units that he heals. Very good used as a melee counter. Particularly good against assault space marines after they jump in and get swarmed. Uh, can also be used to great effect on the apothecary himself. So Dark Riku now with only a great unclean one. It's probably going to die. And a, ni a very nice uh, stomp there, right there though. Or a swarm of flies. Uh, but that... That great unclean one is going to go down right here. Let's see if any units will stay inside the death explosion. The death explosion of the great unclean one is extremely powerful. Like, ridiculously, ridiculously powerful. Like, if it explodes right now, it might actually kill the Lehman Russ. But lag is not doing us the favor of... I think it actually killed the Predator right there. And there we finally see a Commissar Flare. That's one of the other great things about the Commissar that lag has actually not been using. But, um... That is the game. Obviously, well, it's not even quite the game yet, but especially not with uh, not with Adila doing some back capping right here. Just staying in this game. And I can't even tell what's going on right here. Just stuff that seems like it's randomly getting disrupted. Touch of Nurgle. And it's now going to be... Oh no, that's going to be the game. That is the game. Obviously, for much of the end of that game, or like like for the last three, four, maybe five minutes, that was very, very one-sided. But there are some really good things about this game. I really liked it overall. Uh, particularly, Lag's <laughs> Lag's Commissar play was was amazing. Uh, just and very and also very interesting. Very different from what I've seen before. And the <laughs> that uh. Nuke save with Nunshell Fall was probably the highlight of the game, and and then after that everything else was kind of like whatever. But um, hope you enjoyed the cast. I know I did. Have a good night.